Bubba Lubba Dub Dub, if you've been watching Rick and Morty waiting for the larger story to move along, then the season five finale just paid off big time. We got Evil Morty, we got the Citadel, we got the most complete backstory yet for Rick C-137, and we'll break all of that down. Plus, we think we have an idea where we might see Evil Morty pop up next after this. But before we get to all of that, I have to warn you, we're about to spoil the crap out of the Rick and Morty season five finale. So if you haven't seen it yet, or you don't want to know, now would be the time to animate your way out of here until we're done. But it's amazing you dropped by because I was eventually going to hunt you down. There's the reveal. Let's dance. Oh, jeez. Okay, now that we're past the spoiler warning, let's get to it. This episode is 100% Rick and Morty canon. If you've been frustrated by the episodic adventures of the last two seasons, here is the payoff. It's like they went ahead and made an episode purely for those annoying people in your life who love to relentlessly catalog every bit of canon and lore, and then they love to tell you about it. People like myself. Anyway, Evil Morty's been busy since he got elected president of the Citadel in season three. He's turned the entire Citadel into a weapon of mass destruction, which he explodes in the finale, but not before he portals out to a universe where Rick isn't the center of everything. And that was his evil plan all along, just to escape Rick for good. But he's still out there and still the biggest threat to Rick's whole deal, so we'll get into where we think he went in a minute, but first, let's recap a little to explain how we wound up there. We open on Rick living the badass anime anti-hero lifestyle as hard as possible until he realizes the two crows he replaced Morty with were just using him as a rebound so he bails and goes back home with an old washed up version of Morty who, yeah, he actually just made himself look like that to convince Rick to quit with the anime stuff and come home. Anyway, they go to the Citadel to reverse the process, which they do shortly before a gang of Ricks scoop them up and take them to a dinner with President Morty, AKA Evil Morty. And here's where we finally learn his master plan, but we learn a lot more about the Citadel at the same time. That's what makes me evil, being sick of him. If you've ever been sick of him, you've been evil too. Evil Morty wants Rick to help him find a way outside the central finite curve, which is a part of the multiverse that Rick has separated from the entire rest of an infinite multiverse. This means this whole time the adventures we've seen Rick and Morty on have taken place inside the central finite curve, and Evil Morty wants out. Every reality inside the central finite curve is one where Rick Sanchez is the smartest man in existence, and he personally deals with the Ricks who aren't. So basically, Rick has been doing the same work as the TVA and Loki to manage the multiverse in a way that always makes him a god-level super being who cannot be beaten. Like I said, would have been a big help for you to tell me, but I should have everything I need from you now. After Rick refuses, Evil Morty gets the goods anyway using a brain scan. He then fills Morty in on the truth behind the Citadel. Rick C-137 helped create it, but the Ricks of the Citadel eventually began breeding Mortys to build it. This is why we're alive. Morty is horrified to find this out and Rick has to fight their way out before really answering any questions about it and none of this seems to surprise evil Morty at all. He's planned for this. He's also hacked into every portal gun on the Citadel, which leads to a lot of bloodshed from Rick's and Morty's alike, and the blood is kind of crucial to the whole evil plan. Evil Morty hits an escape pod while using tainted portal fluid and all that blood to rip a hole in the central finite curve. He makes it out and escapes through the first yellow portal we've seen on the show. Where to? We'll get to that in a second because Rick C-137 and his Morty work together to save a bunch of Mortys before the Citadel explodes, taking the central finite curve along with it. So all this time, the thing that made evil Morty so evil was he wanted away from Rick and he wanted to end the cycle of abuse all Mortys suffer at the hands of Rick's. Anyway, we'll get to where we think evil Morty went in a second, but first we gotta talk about Rick. You wanna jump the shark? You wanna know my stupid crybaby backstory? Knock yourself out. Not, not now! Morty uses Rick's brain scans to learn more about his grandpa's real story than has ever been revealed on this show at once. An alternate Rick used a portal to kill his wife Diane and daughter Beth, so he searched the multiverse for that Rick, wanting revenge, but never finds him. He meets Bird Person, they fight the Battle of Blood Ridge, which is cash as hell. He goes on a Rick killing spree, unable to find his wife and daughter's killer, but establishes himself as the Rickest Rick in the process. He eventually agrees to a truce with the Council of Ricks and helps them create the Citadel and the the central finite curve. Morty is relieved to know more about his grandpa, but evil Morty reveals even more, showing off all of the universes where Morty meets his end at the hands of a Rick, along with the reminder that every Morty exists because a Rick created them for the express purpose of being mistreated. The last three episodes of season five really did a lot of heavy lifting in showing us why Rick is the way he is and set him up to learn a big lesson in the finale. 
That is, of course, assuming Rick Sanchez ever learns anything from, well, anything. In the final seconds before the Citadel exploded, Rick and Morty worked together to get as many survivors as possible out of there, so it seems like Rick might actually seem to learn something that might make his relationship with his grandson a little less of a science fiction sh** show from start to finish. But that's where all the canon stuff starts to become important. Throughout the last two seasons, Rick has expressed a desire to stay as far away from the canon stuff as possible and keep his adventures with Morty, and sometimes Summer, as standalone one-offs instead of being weighed down by continuity. And this tracks. For someone like Rick, he doesn't want Morty really ever taking a step back to look at the full picture because that full picture will never paint Rick in a sympathetic light. Because he's a dick. A dick named Rick. And that's something Rick and Morty showed us in Season 5. No matter how one-off Rick wants these adventures to be, the consequences of his multiversal meddling never go away. The longer this goes on, the more and more Morty realizes his relationship with his grandpa is not good for his existence in the multiverse or his life as a teenager. At the end of the episode, Rick C-137 and his Morty are aboard that breakaway part of the Citadel that's now its own ship. First, let's examine what evil Morty did just before he disappeared through that yellow portal, the first one of its kind we've ever seen on the show. We think this means Morty just portaled out to a universe where Rick doesn't dominate anything. These versions of reality have existed all along, but Rick's efforts with the Citadel and the Central Finite Curve separated them from the ones where he reigned supreme. If Evil Morty's true intentions are simply to get away from Rick C-137, chances are good that once outside the Central Finite Curve, he did exactly what Rick showed him to do. Find a universe with alternate versions of his family where the Morty died and simply take his place. That's our theory anyway. Will he just live his life as a teenager and stay gone? Doubtful. But if he and Rick C-137 ever square off again, that could also now spiral into a multiversal war type situation that could rival anything Loki and Sylvie might have kicked off over in the MCU. But I digress. What I'm saying is there's a lot of multiversal stuff going on in media these days, and Evil Morty's trip outside the central finite curve just sets up more of that in the future for Rick and Morty. Check out season one, episode nine, Rickheads. Excel <coughs> seer. And of course, now it's time for our Easter egg roundup, and we're kind of covering all of season five in one video, so here's what we spotted. Mr. Nimbus is kind of like Marvel's Namor the Submariner, except he controls the police. The Captain Planet homage named Planetina is voiced by Allison Brie. We saw references to Hellraiser, Galactus, Transformers, National Treasure, Unlicensed AT-ATs, or as the Millennials call them, AT-ATs, Voltron, Goodfellas, The Godfather, Scarface, High Seas Ecto Cooler, again, Naruto, not the classic anime, but the giant space incest baby who shares the same name. The Battle of Blood Ridge in Episode 8 isn't a parody of anything, really. It's just really badass. Oh, yeah! And a quick update on Mr. Poopy Butthole. He pops up in a post credit scene. He lost his job as a professor. He got divorced. And you, you know what? He's just, he's just not doing great right now. But what did you think of the Rick and Morty finale? Where do you think Evil Morty is headed? And what do you think he'll do next? Let's hear your best theories in the comments. Anyway, thanks for watching this episode of Cannon Fodder, and for more Rick and Morty, here is the Season 5 premiere review, and don't forget to follow and subscribe to IGN, wherever you like to watch. Tonight, the quality of dialogue stops mattering. Tonight, I do that thing I want to do, with the curve thing.